Sometimes it happens after <laughs> we've decided something that ultimately is not helpful or healthy that we learn and correct our course. Back in uh, the post uh, way, first wave of COVID, uh, I read a couple articles about something that was becoming more in vogue and they were called dry vacations. Did you ever hear those? These were people who during the, maybe the lockdown, had found solace in drinking <laughs> alcohol and were brought to a recognition that that was not healthy for them and they made a, an effort to find others out there to sponsor these vacation opportunities for folks that would want to find their uh, celebration, their vacation without alcohol. <laughs> I think that uh, was a pretty inspiring story, I thought, and, and something that could maybe cause us to question of what other than human beings sometimes can be wolves in sheep's clothing. <laughs> Uh, most recently, in another article or news story, I heard that there's some school districts in, in California that have banned cell phones in the classroom. That might sound kind of obvious to this. Shouldn't that be the case? But it seems to me that that's a case in a lot of schools that that's not banned, <laughs> that uh, children can have those uh, in the classroom. And it just seems to me, again, another evidence of us learning Okay, well, we, we thought that might be helpful, but turns out it's not. So let's make a correction and help our young people perhaps to see this uh, wolf in sheep's clothing uh, as, a, as, a, as what it is and help them to grow into being people uh, of principle, of being able to make those choices one day for themselves to limit the amount that they would spend. Obviously, that's uh, going to be one day their choice. Uh, to do that. So we see different ways of how in our own lives maybe sometimes it's a, a choice that we thought we were being loving. <laughs> Turned out uh, that we were actually being selfish. Uh, so we learn by these uh, maneuvers, hopefully not in destructive ways, that would keep us from living a, a full life, but learning by our errors. Uh, and I sense that uh, that we might be helped sometimes by the saints. We have St. Clair imaged in the back of the chapel with the San Damiano cross or crucifix in the mirror. <laughs> so you can see that. And this weekend, this past weekend, I offered to the uh, Franciscan secular uh, members here uh, a reflection about that, uh, on what, why she was, what she was doing, St. Clair, and it really the mirror for St. Clair was the San Damiano cross. <laughs> it wasn't really a mirror <laughs> like we would look in. And the San Damiano cross for her became the focus of her prayer in a way that revealed to her both what was exterior but also interior. That the, that's what the cross of Jesus, the crucifix, can do for us is to, to show us first and foremost our worth in God's eyes. <laughs> in some ways it's a mirror that shows us our insides. <laughs> That our motivations, our choices and behaviors, the fact that, yeah, we are kind of like Jesus, broken human beings, but those who can trust, even at the worst moments of our lives, in the fidelity of the Father in a way that will bring us through those experiences to new life. So let's see how she, St. Clair, might inspire us uh, to be looking at Jesus as that solution <laughs> uh, that we might never follow the example of any who would be wolves in sheep's clothing, but both within and without. We have that consistency, that authenticity, that integrity that is an invitation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's not always easy. It's learning by our mistakes and sometimes our errors, but there's some evidence that we are learning, people in general and maybe ourselves, that we might grow more and more authentic. Uh, that what you see is what you get both internally and exteriorly. Uh, may that be our goal, because I sense that Jesus is inviting us to follow him in that way. <laughs>